Let's bring in Janice Dean, Fox News senior meteorologist. Janice, obviously a very, very tough day yesterday. Where are we now going forward? Right, so the area of low pressure is uh, right over Orlando, where they're going to see uh, an incredible amount of wind and rain. This is the landfall. So over 12 hours ago, uh, we had landfall near Cayo Costa, Florida. That's actually where Hurricane Charlie made landfall in 2004, almost the, uh, the exact same spot. The only difference is this storm was three times the size of Charlie, and it will go down as top five most powerful hurricanes that has ever hit uh, the U.S. So here's the water rise in Fort Myers. That This is actually before we stopped uh, getting updates. So we're going to see higher totals. But just to put this in perspective, this would be the highest storm surge that Fort Myers has ever felt in their history. Uh, some of the top wind reports, 140 miles per hour at Cape Coral. Punta Gorda, 135 mile per hour winds. Punta Gorda is one of the spots where Charlie made uh, incredible damage uh, in 2004. Top rainfall totals close to 20 inches in Northport, we're going to see upwards of close to maybe 30 inches of rain uh, from this system when all is said and done. And then we've got that area of low pressure across Orlando bringing heavy rainfall. So category one storm, it's going to continue uh, to weaken as it moves out into the Atlantic. There is the chance that it could strengthen a little bit, maybe even back to a hurricane. We are anticipating a tropical storm in the next couple of hours, uh, but you know, the most powerful storm storm is over. We're still going to see impacts though. Heavy rainfall, still storm surge because we've got those counterclockwise winds pushing the Atlantic side uh, storm surge in towards North Florida and then into Georgia and South Carolina where we're anticipating another landfall uh, in the next 12 to 24 hours. You can see the heavy rain falling in Orlando up towards Daytona Beach. These are flash flood warnings uh, where flooding is imminent. Uh, we're going to get, you know, two to three inches of heavy rain an hour. And you've been talking about power outages. Over 2 million people are without power. Uh, this is going to be not only a today's situation, but we could be without power for weeks. Uh, in some of these areas, emergency crews can't get into. Uh, so that's going to be a big concern and a story we're going to certainly follow over the next couple of days, the next couple of weeks. Still hurricane warnings for central Florida. And then we have tropical storm warnings for North Florida, the coast of North Florida, in towards Georgia and the Carolinas. So we're not done with this storm yet. Uh, still dealing with a category one storm. We're expecting it to weaken uh, as we go through the next couple of days and then making another landfall on Friday, we think in coastal South Carolina. Here are the impacts. We're still dealing with hurricane force gusts as it moves through the rest of Florida and then into Georgia and South Carolina. So we're going to be dealing with not only heavy rain, hurricane force winds, but power outages here too. heavily populated neighborhoods as we get into Friday and Saturday. Saturday. Flash flood threat, of course, for parts of North Florida in towards Georgia and the Carolinas as we head into the weekend. Uh, and then as we get into Saturday and Sunday, is this going to impact you in the mid-Atlantic and the Northeast? Yes, it certainly could, but it looks like the Appalachians are really going to get heavy rainfall out of uh, the rest of Ian. Here is the forecast track as we go through time. Again, impacting North Florida into Georgia, the Carolinas, and then, you know, this mountainous terrain as we get into portions of the Virginia and West Virginia area. Tennessee and Kentucky flood alerts for the rest of the morning into the afternoon and even into the weekend for much of the state of Florida and then into coastal Georgia and South Carolina. Rain still to come uh, anywhere from 8 to 12, even 12 to 18 inches. Uh, so, you know, we're going to see significant impacts throughout the state of Florida uh, after Ian is gone. And then as we get into the next five days, we're going to be seeing the potential for six to eight, even 12 inches of rainfall for parts of the mid-Atlantic, even up towards the northeast. Flash flood threat through today and Friday, focusing in on uh, the northern part of Florida, north central Florida. And then again, as that track moves into Georgia and South Carolina. Uh, watches and warnings again as we go through the next 12 to 24 hours uh, for north Florida. Georgia, South Carolina, uh, and then we'll have to see what happens as it goes in towards the mid-Atlantic. Hurricane watches still in effect because that system is still going to hold together as it moves out into the Atlantic and brings those hurricane force gusts into uh, 
portions of northern Florida in towards coastal Georgia and South Carolina. And remember, we're still going to see that storm surge because the counterclockwise winds will push the Atlantic side water in towards the coastline. So that's going to be really dangerous as well. Here's the peak storm surge uh, three to five feet uh, across these vulnerable areas. That's going to cause damage uh, in the next 12 to 24 hours. So we can't forget our friends in Georgia, South Carolina and North Carolina as well. So, um, you know, the worst of the storm is over, but we are still dealing with impacts from North Florida, from uh, portions of Orlando in towards Daytona and then the Carolinas. We have to be concerned about this region as well. Uh, keep in mind, we haven't seen the worst footage yet. It's it's hard for emergency crews to get in there. Uh, and I'm really concerned once, you know, the daylight hits that we're going to see, you know, some of the worst damage that we have ever seen in the state of Florida. That is the fear, J.D. J.D., thank you. Great setting it up for us. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.